We are in the process, and I'm sure you've seen, uh, as I explained to you, we have a multiple crime scenes, but sticking specifically with the school. The school crime scene, the building itself, is still being uh, worked on. Remember I told you we had a secondary crime scene, that was all the vehicles on the exterior of the school. Uh, our detectives have examined each and every one of them, searched each and every one of them, and we are beginning to release those back to their owners. Um, so slowly but surely, we're, we're uh, beginning to uh, complete the exterior part of the crime scene. Uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor are on site. They have been uh, actively involved uh, today. One thing that's uh, becoming somewhat of a concern, and that is misinformation is being posted on social media sites. There has been misinformation coming from people posing as the shooter in this case, posing using other IDs, uh, mimicking this uh, this crime and crime scene and crime criminal activity that took place in this community. Um, there's been some things in somewhat of a threatening manner. It is important to know that we have discussed with federal authorities that these, these issues are crimes. They will be investigated statewide and federally, and prosecution will take place when people perpetrating this information are identified. Again, all information relative to this case is coming from these microphones and any information coming from other sources cannot be confirmed and in many cases it's been found is inaccurate. So I simply, uh, that's the newest twist today uh, that we want to make sure that's perfectly clear that social media websites that contain information relative to this case are not being posted by the Connecticut State Police, are not being posted by the Newtown Police, are not being posted by any authorities in this case. So any of that information and people that are putting that information up there in any manner, all right, that can be construed as a violation of state or federal law uh, will be prosecuted, will be investigated and prosecuted. Um, questions, I can take a few, and again, understanding that we still are active in this case, okay? Understand when you can't go has a very specific timeline of how this event happened, but I'm wondering if you can, in fact, confirm that timeline that's now being reported in great detail by the Hartford Courage this morning, from the moment... Very good question. I've been the only one speaking about this case to every member of the media. I cannot restate or state heavily enough, I have not and will not put out a timeline in this criminal investigation as it is underway. It is inappropriate. We will not do that. Any sources that are putting out any kind of information like that does not come from the official investigating agency, which is the Connecticut State Police, assisted by the Newtown Police Department. Okay? We will not put that out as the investigation is ongoing. Sir, what do you mean by I, haven't, I have not read it, so I can tell you that, but we have not put out any timeline information. We would not do that. Well, sir, you, you have said that there were two places inside the school. Uh, can you confirm that the principal and the psychologist were shot near the front door and that the children and the teachers and other workers were in two classes? Again, again, what I've stated relative to the interior of the crime scene was that the shooting took place in a singular section of the school. It involved two classrooms and a hallway. That's as much as we said about that. Uh, we cannot and will not describe the location of the deceased uh, in this in this investigation. We simply no, won't we do that. Yes, sir. Media. Sir. Yes, sir. I don't know that, quite frankly, and, and that's what I'm trying to get people to understand is that we can't take segments of an investigation and, and discuss that publicly because something taken out of context could be misinterpreted. It could be it could be misinterpreted and not factual once it's misinterpreted. Therefore, I don't number one, I don't know anything about that, that particular statement you just made. Okay, and number two, even if I did, I would say let us put it into the contents of the investigation so that we can, we can manage it and you can get a whole complete picture of exactly what's going on. Do I know anything more? Just the four firearms. We're working with our federal partners 
and we, as I said in my statement, we are analyzing, examining, we'll trace them back to their origin, we'll trace every step of the way, and every time that we can, where they were used, how they were used, to be examined forensically, a great deal of work must be done on those weapons. Sir, 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 no, we can't go into detail. Sir, sir, I can't answer that question. I do not know. Our, our detectives will, in fact, be able to answer that question at the conclusion of this investigation. Sir, I know yes, sir. I can't go into detail about motive or what you're finding, but how confident do you feel that you will eventually get a good picture of motive? I'm confident that we will put every single resource that we have into this investigation and that we will answer every single question that is humanly possible and with the conclusion of this case. We'll examine every piece of evidence. We'll speak to every single witness that can have any impact whatsoever on this case. And certainly our goal, our goal is to answer every single question. What you know now, do you think with no no, no alive shooter, how confident do you feel that you'll eventually be able to put together something Okay, just, just to uh, say, we have not stated what evidence we have and have not collected. I want to make that perfectly clear. Uh, how confident am I? We have the best of the best working on this case. We have our major crime detectives. We have federal authorities. We have Newtown investigators. We have everything and everybody focusing on this case. As everyone knows, it's a huge case. It's a huge case. We're using every single resource, and our goal is to play, paint a complete picture so that we all know and the public knows exactly what happened here. A couple more folks. Can you say about the size of the magazines that were used in the gun? I'm sorry, I cannot. I cannot. Well, I, I, the best I can explain, I mean, I'm not a social media expert, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna claim to be, uh, but there have been indications that, and there have been quotes um, by people who are, who are posing as the shooter uh, you, can, you can go on different uh, Facebook pages and find this information out. I know members of the press have. And uh, suffice it to say that the information can, in fact, be, has, in fact, been uh, deemed as threatening. It's been inaccurate. It's been people posing as other people and uh, discussing with federal authorities. Uh, they believe it's a violation of state and or federal law and uh, warrants an investigation. Anyone that, in fact, is perpetrating that information uh, could in fact be subject to arrest and be, be prosecuted federally. Has so anyone been identified question? They're working on that right now. This is brand new information. We literally just got it up as, as we were coming through this press conference. Sir, a couple more sure quick questions and then I gotta go. Yes, ma'am. Um, as soon the, the minute I have that, we're gonna reduce it to writing, we'll bring it up to you. Uh, we'll bring more copies of the names from yesterday if anyone needs it, but uh, certainly the minute we have that, we'll bring that up to you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. They have already started that process. Yes, ma'am. What's important to note about safety in school is that from the uh, educational commissioner in, in uh, the state of Connecticut working with the governor's office, uh, it's, it's being examined on a, on a local and statewide uh, basis. There are many plans in place for emergency purposes in all the schools in Connecticut. All of them are being re-examined, and certainly parents should, in fact, be confident that law enforcement in every community, state police, local police, uh, the educators, the, the leaders of the school systems are doing everything they can to make sure that the schools in Connecticut are safe. What I'd like the lieutenant to do is to talk about the uh, schools here in Newtown, please. Sir, One second. Yes, uh, we've been working closely with the superintendent of schools here. Obviously, we're still very sensitive to the family in this situation, and we want to we want to move forward very slowly and respectfully. Um, they do have some tentative plans as far as moving forward with school, and uh, the school system will be putting those out uh, in the near future. Do you imagine that ch children will ever return to class in that building? You know, at this time, it's too early to say, but. Uh, I would find it very difficult for them to do that, um, but certainly that's one of the things that uh, they're going to have to um, look into, yes. They're yeah, going to transport kids to, to Monroe starting later this week, right? That's one of the plans that we're looking into. It's uh, tentative plans right now, but as we said, you know, we're trying to be as respectful as we can. We want to keep these kids together. They need support of each other. Okay, a couple more, a couple more quick questions. Yes, sir. Rise of school breaks a window, turns left, right. Give us a general sense of, of, of his movements and how 
the, the, the most general I can be, it, it, and it has to be very general, was that the school was, was he forcibly entered the school facility itself, okay, encountered, um, just encountered staff, students, and the tragedy occurred. That, that's as much as I want to go. I'm sorry, but that's, 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 that's all. Can you tell us survivors have they been able to talk to them? Our people are talking with everybody, uh, slowly but surely, but methodically, too. This is not something that... Uh, this is something where, where people's hearts are broken, and as we all well know, and we have to be sensitive, and we, we are moving as quickly and efficiently as we can. The people that we can talk to, yes, we have. We have spoken to many, many witnesses, but there are many more witnesses to speak to, including and not limited to uh, maybe even speaking with what youngsters. Are, are the we, we, uh, That's Connecticut uh, Lieutenant, State Police Lieutenant Paul Vance addressing the media. Doesn't have a whole lot of new details right now, but he is trying to outline what he can, including confirming that the shooter forcibly entered the school, but not.